Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 361. Watch out for physicians posing as hormone health experts. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This week, we're going to take a risk. Uh, we, We want to talk about other physicians, not by name, not specifically, not anybody that could sue us individually. <laughs> but we want to talk about some of the problems that have reoccurred over the years. And Dr. Maupin has been doing hormone replacement therapy as her primary focus of her practice for 13 or 14 years. And in the course of that journey, as she has learned more and more about what she needs to do and about how hormones interact and what it takes to get people healthier, she has faced a lot of criticism professionally from other doctors who don't know what she does, who don't agree with what she does, who haven't done the research or haven't gotten the training, and who are skeptical about quackery. And so when she first began to do this as a medical specialty, there were uh, complaints that she would hear from other physicians, but mainly would hear from patients that would come in and say, well, my, my real doctor says you're a quack. Now, she has a reputation. She has established herself. She's published a book. She's given presentations at uh, international uh, meetings of physicians who specialize in anti-aging medicine, and hormone replacement therapy, and she is an acknowledged expert. Doctors of other specialties contact her for advice about managing patients. Uh, they, they cross-refer to her uh, for her expertise, and she actually has patients who have found her on the web or the internet from all over the world who have complex medical concerns that they cannot get addressed in their local communities in various countries around the world. People from England, people from Australia, people from Canada, uh, people from St. Bart's and St. Kitts and the Caribbean, people from Mexico and from every state in the Union actually journey to St. Louis to see her or contact her and basically badger her to say, I've read your materials. I've, I've seen all the research data that's on your website. I've read your book. And I, I, I want you to help me talk to my local physician. My doctors disagree with you. They don't know what you know. But I am at an impasse in terms of helping me get better. Uh, so they contact Kathy. And she spends a lot of time and energy for which she doesn't receive compensation. She just invests in getting people better. She responds to these people. She does research into their condition. She talks to local physicians who will speak to her and (laughs) explains what she knows, what she thinks, and why. And in some cases, there have been what most people would call miraculous treatments, miraculous interventions that have helped people get better. So that's a lot of what you hear Mm -hmm. about. But another thing that has occurred is that throughout the United States, more and more communities are getting on the testosterone bandwagon. And they're saying men in particular Mm -hmm. need to replace testosterone. There's still some delay or lag time about women who need testosterone replacement. Uh, But these communities that are now looking at replacing testosterone in men as they age are starting to have clinics and physicians who have not received any specialized training, who do not belong to these international medical organizations that meet twice a year, uh, to learn what they need to learn. So they're just popping in pellets. And then when there are dosage questions or there are side effect issues or complications of one kind or another, they don't know what they're doing because they haven't had any training. Mm -hmm. We are calling them posers, pellet posers. (laughs) They pose as if they know what they're doing. They offer you a treatment which they recommend because they say it's cheaper. It's cheaper than what she would charge. It's cheaper than what people who specialize in this charge. 
I can do this for you right here in my office. And we can even, in some cases, get your insurance to pay for it, which is illegal which is... and can't be done. But they do that. And so then you and they are at risk of perpetuating an insurance fraud or a Medicare fraud if they bill for putting pellets in you and they receive payment from Medicare or from insurance companies. Because that's not allowed by the federal government. Let me, let me, let me clarify that. Yeah. Most of these doctors are primary care or um, surgeons, OBGYNs, uh, some family doctors that just think, well, this is working so well. Why don't I do it? Right. It looks easy. I can just go on the internet, and that's what they do. I'm going to go on the internet and see how you put these pellets. Watch a couple in. YouTube films. Yeah. Yeah. And they stick. First of all, their insertions aren't good. They don't. Where they put the pellets is not usually correct. They don't use a procedure that is current. They use a procedure that was on the internet for the last thirty years. They also. Um, they have sterilization problems. We've had people who have had infections come to us after they've been to them because they don't know how to sterilize things. We've also had patients come to us who have had the pellets put into their muscle. Pellets have to go into the fat. They don't go in the muscle. They go under the skin in a fat pad, and that's how they dissolve. If they're stuck in a muscle, you're going to have terrible pain. And Or they've had bruising that is not bruising like what we would get from capillaries. It would be little bits of bruising like huge amounts of bruising that you would get because you don't know what you're doing. In you hit a big vessel. The pellets are put. Right. You put, get you hit a big vessel in the hip or up here because you don't really know what you're doing. Go too deep or go, I mean, there's all kinds of things that can happen. That's just the insertion. But then when it comes to adjusting dose, so a lot of the doctors that are doing this in my community will send a, a record release. They want to see what dose I give, and then they're going to continue giving that dose. But they don't know how I got there, and they don't know how to adjust it. And if something changes with the patient, another drug, another sickness, another illness, he, they have no idea what to do. So they do what every, every, most every doctor in our community does, is they turn on their recorder at night, which says, go to the emergency room if you have an emergency. But they don't answer your question. They don't answer, they don't have anybody, like we have nurse practitioners and nurses to take care of your questions. We know how to handle this. If they don't, they come to me, we devise a treatment plan. There is always somebody that knows how to adjust your dose and take care of everything all the way up to for females needing to go to the gynecologist for like a biopsy of the uterus or a DNC. So we do everything up to the procedure, which is ethical. It's unethical to do a procedure that you just do, and then you say, go to somebody else for the complications, go to somebody else for the, for the adjustment. And I know from friends of mine who are gynecologists, our patients don't call them for adjustment of hormones, but these guys are saying, go to your gynecologist, they'll adjust your pellets. Well, they don't know how, and it's not their job. But on the payment side, that's a huge issue because I had to, divide, I had to develop a new business, a new practice with no contracts with insurance companies to do this because insurance companies in general for women don't pay for it. So if you have an insurance contract and you're a doctor and you do something in your office that insurance doesn't pay for, you can't collect up front. You just can't do it. You have to still send the bill to the insurance company. If they say it's uncovered, you can't charge for it. That's against your contract. So that's insurance fraud. If you tell a patient, Oh, you got to pay me up front. And if the insurance pays, then maybe I'll pay you back. That never, it doesn't happen for women. Women don't get this paid for. Mm -hmm. So in general, they're just collecting up front and then they're not going to pay you back anything. So th it's a lie. <laughs> they're just, they're just getting you in saying, well, she's not going to submit your insurance. Well, we don't, but we give you all the papers that you can set, submit yourself and get paid yourself from your insurance. So we're doing so you it. You don't do pre-certification and you don't submit insurance paperwork to the company. In I don't have any contracts with any insurance companies. And that was the one thing Gino Tatera told me that wasn't about medicine. Mm -hmm. He said, you, if you want to do this, you have to have a practice and a business that does not have a Medicare contract, a Medicaid contract, or an insurance contract, because you will be violating laws if you have those contracts mm -hmm. and you collect any money from them to reimburse yourself for, or, or you, reimburse you the patient. yourself into fraud. Right. Right. You can't do that. So if you have a doctor who is trying to get you away from your pellet doctor, who 
there are many pellet doctors out there that know what they're doing, then, I mean, I advise you not to do it. These are posers. These are people that go, oh, yeah, I want to make a little extra money, so I'm going to just do this, and I'm going to get money up front, and it's going to be great. And, I, you know, and they none of their staff know what they're doing. Nobody knows what they're doing. And the patients are left out there with questions. So then they call many of our patients who have left us to go to these guys one guy in particular will always call us like a month later going, I don't feel good. I, that he won't answer my calls. Nobody calls me back. Nobody emails me back. Nobody texts me back. I get no response from this doctor and I paid him. So he's fraudulent and they have no idea what's going on. And we can't necessarily or shouldn't take care of his problems. So we have to send him back to that doctor and say, make an appointment, you know, go in and, Make an appointment and talk to them about it because that's the only way you're going to get to get any questions answered. So and if then, if then, and then if you get there and he's going, well, my favorite is there was there was one guy in town, different guy, who goes, oh yeah, I'm an expert, and he starts advertising, and he would, I had his records, and in his records he say, well, let's try a little of this, let's try a little of that, let's try the, well, we're, in his records he's writing, well, we're just going to experiment on this, and they, he'd have people come in monthly which they were paying him to get pellets monthly, which is, we do it every four months, every six months. That's how long they last. But he didn't know what to do with them. He didn't know how long they lasted or anything about them. So he's just experimenting on the patient at the patient's cost. Mm -hmm. the patient is paying him. So that's a sign that your doctor doesn't know what they're doing and you shouldn't be going to them for this. I mean, they may be a good doctor and everything else, but they shouldn't be going into a field that they don't understand. Mm -hmm. So really... Hormones now, in, in this day and age, most people don't want to take care of them, and I do, and that's all I do, so going to a specialist makes sense, mm -hmm. and I can't take care of the world. I take care of the people I take care of and the people who email me from around the world and country. We try to get them in, but if they're in Australia, I try to give them advice, right. or London, and they can't get here. Some of my patients fly from London to see me. Well, but, but part of what you complain about in our conversations is your friends who are gynecologists who have patients that are not your patients but mm -hmm. for hormone treatment, who get hormone treatments, you get pellets somewhere else, and then the doctor that's put the pellets in doesn't respond to their uh, emergent concerns mm -hmm. and sends them to these other doctors, mm -hmm. these, these gynecologists who are mm -hmm. friends of yours. And they say, we didn't do this procedure. We didn't put anything in your body. We don't know what was put in your body. We have no involvement. And they're not responsible. But Right, medically. But now you want us to figure out what's wrong. And Handle the it. fallout. Yeah. Uh, and they complain about that. They, they say, you know, this the comes out of, out of left field. We don't know about it. We don't deal with it. It's not our specialty. Mm -hmm. But these women are reluctant to go back to their own physician and demand that something be done. Or they mm -hmm. get blown off. They right. try to go back. They get told, well, we don't deal with that. Uh, I'm bleeding. Why am I bleeding? Right. Well, we take care of bleeding all the way up to the point of... Well, you do you need your... At our office, yeah. I just want to show the difference. Okay. We take care of somebody who has postmenopausal bleeding because they're taking estrogen, which can happen with any estrogen if you have a uterus. Mm -hmm. And if it's oral or if it's sublingual or vaginal, any estrogen, if you take it, you have to take progesterone. If that isn't balanced or you don't take it or something happens, you can still bleed from that uterus. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a danger sign. And and usually it's a danger sign. If we, we as a practice, can't get you to stop bleeding, then maybe there's a polyp. Maybe there's a fibroid. Maybe there's something that needs to be looked at surgically. Then it is appropriate to send that patient for a procedure to their gynecologist. Mm -hmm. But... It's not appropriate for me to, to give them hormones and go, oh, let somebody else manage that. Mm -hmm. That's not appropriate. But, but that happens. That happens all the time. And the gynecologists are getting very unhappy with doctors who do that. And even people who never sent me a patient before are now sending me people who say, who are going to one of these other doctors. Right. And, and they say, you have to go to her because she'll take care of everything unless you absolutely need me. And then... So I'm getting a lot of referrals there, but I've also sat down and had dinner with my friends who are gynecologists and they're just, they're, they don't know what to do. So, I mean, for them, I, I said, here's, I wrote a letter. I said, here's a letter you can send to the patient or you, here's a letter you can send to that doctor. 
nicely saying, I can't handle the complications of your procedures. Mm -hmm. So that's, and I don't know if they're using them or not, but probably they're using that same language in their office. So I'm trying to help the people who help me. I mean, who, who send patients to me and support me when I do need a GYN procedure. Heck, I did those procedures forever. I loved it when people sent me a hysterectomy or a hysteroscopy or, I mean, their procedures are, I mean, procedures are fun for all doctors because it's an instantaneous fix. So. But it's not just GYN procedures. It's mm -hmm. not just women who need a gynecologist to solve a, a female problem. Uh, sometimes there are side effects. Sometimes mm -hmm. there are concerns when people get testosterone pellets, men or women get mm -hmm. testosterone pellets. And these people show up at your office or other physician's office because the doctor that put those pellets in doesn't know what they're doing. They're posers in effect. Right. They, mm -hmm. they know how to slice your skin and insert the pellet, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to diagnose or treat complications. Mm -hmm. uh, so your concern is if people are going to get pellets, especially if it's a bargain basement place, you know, mm -hmm. we can do this cheap and fast and you mm -hmm. can get them here. Uh, and they don't know about how to treat complications. Like someone calls one of your friends mm -hmm. uh, and says, I'm getting facial hair, mm -hmm. you know, I, I didn't have it before. I have it now. Mm -hmm. Can you fix it? What do I do? Yeah, what do I do? Because the doctor that put the pellets in doesn't, doesn't know. know what to do and says, well, just go to a different doctor. Go somewhere right. else and get, go somewhere get this else. taken care of. And what other kinds of complications do you do you see? So besides, the, besides female bleeding, we see problems with um, – the biggest problem with men is if they've let their testosterone – go mm -hmm. for a long period of time and they've gotten some they've gotten high blood pressure they've gotten some vascular issues when we give them testosterone back they get their desire back mm -hmm. and they get partially better at having an erection but not all the way better mm -hmm. so then they're frustrated well they've part of that is that they're are they've already they came too late okay mm -hmm. so i mean and you're i'm approaching people who have just started to have ed and have had it for 10 years, you know? So, so I catch people in it all the way through this spectrum. So if I catch somebody early, then they're not going to have ED by, and they take, when they take testosterone, but if I'm catching somebody late, right. they may still have it. So in those cases, I have to, I try Viagra, Cialis, Levitra. Um, but if those things aren't completely satisfactory with the pellets mm -hmm. and all the other symptoms are gone, then I go, I send somebody to their urologist right. for, and I usually send them there first just to make sure that they're a-okay and check their PSA and right. that kind of thing. But if I send them to the urologist because they may need penile injections or even an implant, something like that. So something more drastic or I find diabetes. So oftentimes nobody else is looking at diabetes and diabetes can cause ED. Mm. So it affects the microvasculature of the pelvis. And so the little tiny vessels that you need to have blood flow through are damaged. So it's important not to get diabetes and it's important to treat it properly if you want to have a good erection. So ED is not recognized generally uh, as an early warning sign for cardio problems or stroke problems. No, but it should be. It should be. And it's not always connected with taking testosterone. I mean, that, that doesn't, it doesn't always fix it. So sometimes it could be need something a else has to gone. Appropriate doctor, but right. the doctor that's doing the pellets needs to know that right. and have those conversations mm -hmm. with the patient to say this is a concern. We need to check this out, mm -hmm. and, and and they need to and they need to hear. We've tried everything hormonally. Right now we need to have, and usually we have an idea of what's going on just by the. Me blood work we do and we do a lot more blood work than most places mm -hmm. so we have an idea of what's going on so we can send them to the proper specialist so, so that's something that could happen um prostate enlargement for men right can happen it usually happens in the first four months of treatment and then goes away but very infrequently we have it cause problems with passing urine then we have certain things we do to fix that but if that isn't fixed with what we do 
then oftentimes we have some urologists we have good relationships with who will, are happy to see these patients because mm -hmm. we did all the other preparatory work. They don't have to do that part. Uh, for women, side effects of breast tenderness. We have, we have uh, supplements we use and we have, we change the hormones a little bit for that or breast enlargement or most doctors don't understand conversion of testosterone into estrogen, which yeah. men do a lot of as they get older and women sometimes increases they get older when they get belly fat they make more estrone they make they use up their testosterone faster and it counteracts the testosterone if, if a doctor gives me testosterone pellets puts mm -hmm. them in my hip and i convert the from dihydrotestosterone i convert that into estrogen and mm -hmm. start to have problems with that if he doesn't know that he mm -hmm. doesn't know how to treat that. He just gives you more testosterone. You make more estrogen. More estrogen. So what happens with that is you get man boobs. Right. So if you're getting man boobs on your testosterone formulation, whatever that might be, then you're probably converting into estrogen. And then you're also getting belly fat. Mm -hmm. And so we know how to, to deal with that. But there are many doctors who don't. There's a lot of different troubleshooting that you have to be aware of right. to do this. This isn't something you can learn in a, a day or a conference. I mean... This is something you have to actually have some expert teach you exactly what you need to do, and then you have to try it, and then you have to go back and then ask your questions about why this or that wasn't perfect. So you train other doctors. Yes. You were trained. You have I was trained by a doctor who, who had expertise in this. And, and what you learned was that you need to know about adjusting dosage, and you need to know about solving complications. Right, troubleshooting. And troubleshooting the problems that people have. So if you're just going somewhere to a physician who can put pellets in you and says, oh, I can do that, and doesn't, but doesn't know about dosage, doesn't know about troubleshooting and solving complications, then you are going to a poser, somebody that's, that's selling what he shouldn't be selling, that's doing what he shouldn't be doing. And especially if he is telling you, I can get your insurance to pay for that. Uh, if, if that's those, just those a red lie, flags especially for off. women. Sometimes for men, insurance will Recover. reimburse yeah. uh, the patient. But if they ha but if the doctor has an insurance contract, you can't pay. You shouldn't pay up front. If you if if like Blue Cross says that doctor's in Blue Cross Blue Shield, and you make sure that he has a contract with Blue Cross Blue Shield, then he can't charge you up front or she right. can't charge you up front. So at the end of the day, this is another case of buyer beware. You should always, and we, we say this in all the podcasts that we do, you should be an informed consumer. You need to be an active participant in your healthcare decisions. So don't just buy what the, the shiny object that's for sale. Find out what's going on. Find this is out not what something training... you buy on Amazon. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Yes, thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.